want you guys to open Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 5. And while, um, while you guys are doing that, I'm going to say a quick story. So it, it's a personal story to me. So uh, it was a while back uh, when I got my license uh, uh, with some other of my, my friends and, and cousins. Uh, about a month, month and a half, two months, one of my friends, he gets pulled over and I'm like, and I start making, I was quick to judge and make fun. I was like, oh, what a loser. He already got pulled over after two months of driving. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's embarrassing. I mean, at least wait a year. So I was quick to judge him, make fun of him. And uh, next thing you know, I get, it stuck my, I get myself stuck in a sticky situation. And uh, I get pulled over uh, a couple weeks later. And <laughs> obviously, I got, I got let off with a warning while, I was, uh, while he was walking to my car. I was praying in my mind so hard. I mean, unbelievable. And when I was praying, I heard this voice say, because you judged that person, you got tested in the exact same area, and you fell, um, like, perfectly to that, that trap that Satan put. And I'm like, and after that, I realized I need to stop judging people. I need to stop making fun of people because what I did, that's going to keep on happening. It's like when you throw a boomerang. Whenever you throw a boomerang, it comes back to you. And that's what happened. When I threw out that judgment, when I made fun of that person, the exact same thing came back and tested me, and I fell into the trap. It's weird. Whenever I throw boomerangs, they never come back to me. <laughs> it's like whenever I throw, it doesn't count back or I throw and it does something and breaks something. I don't know. Okay, so Matthew chapter uh, 7 verse 1 through 5. Do not judge others and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is a standard by which you will be judged. And why are you worried about a speck? in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. And as our uh, amazing faithful friend Edwin over here comes out with a two by six and a, a splinter, <laughs> I, I think... I don't think, I know, our God, he's a funny God. Because in this story, as you can tell, over dramatic. So I have right here a two by six. And it's kind of big, so I'm going to have to put on Edwin's shoulder. Imagine this. I have this to my eye, and Edwin has that splinter to his eye. And I say, hey, let me take that thing out of your eye. It's bothering me. And I don't think you can see that well. So I go, and I take that. And obviously, you can see I have a log in my eye. Our God's a funny God, yeah? Thank you. <laughs> so when, when I read this verse, I, I thought the same thing. I was like, that doesn't make sense. But then when I started digging more and more, I, I got a splinter in my arm. Um, when, I got, when I started digging more and more into to why God said this is he doesn't mean this physically. I mean, imagine this. You don't see people walking around with logs in their faces, No. I mean, if, if you've seen that, please tell that person, recommend them to a doctor because that's not normal. But when God said this, he meant this spiritually. For example, imagine two, two guys, two, two friends. One man, he is, he's kind of, a, he has a problem with money. Once in a while, he will go gamble or he will buy something that he shouldn't have and waste his money. And another guy, he's strongly addicted in gambling and he wastes his money. He just bought an expensive car that he can't afford on a loan. He has a house that he can't afford and soon will, uh, the bank will take it from him. And he says to his friend, hey, man, I know you're having a, a problem with, I mean, you can't really, like, save your money. And, and you have, hey, let me help you out. Let me give you some financial tips. His friend will look at him like he's crazy and say, dude, look at your own life. You look at the log that's in your face. First deal with the log in your own eye. And then fix and then help me. This is what God says here. He says, deal with your own, your own pile of poop, and then you can deal with your friends. So, and this leads me to, uh, to the title of my message, which is, what's in your head? And my first point is, why we judge and the consequences. So, three reasons we judge. One is, we are insecure. Often, when we are scared or intimidated by other people, we put them down. For example, if two women see a prettier girl, they right away think of her as a threat and they start looking for 
for uh, negativity in her life. Oh, dude, those shoes, that does not match her outfit. Her hair does not look right. Her eyebrows, she forgot to pluck that one hair, and the whole world can see that. You start looking for, for weak points in that person. No one's perfect. God created that person the way that they are. Uh, point number two, we, or, or uh, number two, <laughs> we are seeking change. When we want our own lives to be different, we are quickly to judge the life of others. For example, if someone wants to have a strong, healthy relationship have, and, and get married, and they see that their friend just got engaged, and they live an amazing life. God's on their side. God is just blessing their life. And they, they're quick to judge, and they say, that girl doesn't even deserve that guy. I don't know why they're even getting married. And you start saying stuff that, that sounds like nonsense. And you bring others down so you can bring yourself up. Just like Giovanni said, she was, she was in depression and, and she was stuck in all that stuff. And when, when you're in that position, when people are in that position, the, the most common thing to do is if you want to bring yourself up, people, the, the closest thing that you can do to make that thing go quick is you judge people. Because when you judge other people when you're at your lows, you bring them down so you can bring yourself up. And when you do that, that starts causing an unhealthy life, unhealthy habits. My point number two, why does, what does it do? So three things judgment do to us and others. Hurt other people. This might not always happen. If the person finds out, are you in the clear, right? Not necessarily because sometimes that thing has a curveball. And when, you, when it goes and you're like, oh, it's going to miss that person. But then it curves and it can hurt them in weird ways. For example, so, and this is kind of a little bit off of judgment, but whenever I do something, when I was a kid, I would always lie to my mom and dad, always. And I know a lot of us, we're in the same spot where our parents always find out. Even if you Googled that, you YouTube that, and the people said, it's the best lie you could tell your parents. My parents would always find out. And even if they didn't see me do anything, uh, one of my cousins or my mom's friends or dad's friends, they would see me and they'd be like, hey, I saw your kid doing this yesterday. Do, are you aware of this? And things like that happen. And you are put on the spot and then you are, you are hurt. Number two, a judge by actions. We often judge other people by their action and judge ourselves by our intentions. For example, when I judge my friend, I judge him by his action. Because he got pulled over, I judge him because he got pulled over. But I judge myself on my intentions. I judge myself because I'm, oh, dude, I'm going to stop at every single stop sign. I don't care. I mean, it's just a couple seconds. If, I'm not going to do a California roller like a lot of people do. <laughs> I'm going to do speed limit. I'm going to obey every single law I know. That's how I judge myself. And because I did that, I ended up, I said, I'm never going to be in that position. Never say never. Because I learned my lesson from there, and I want you to learn from other people's mistakes, not your own. And my parents would always tell me that, learn from other people's mistakes, not your own. And in this case, I disobeyed my parents, and I went out. I said, I'm never going to do this. And next thing you know, that never became uh, permanent. Point number three. How to stop judging. Monitor your thoughts. You can monitor the thoughts you, that come through your mind. For example, an airport, they have security. They don't let a person with a bomb come through because most likely their intentions are to hurt people. They know what's right and what's wrong. The people that are the wrong and the people that are right, they let the people that are right go through. And the, the people that are wrong, they don't let them through. They either arrest them. So you have to do that with your mind. You have to have a security. You are the security in your mind. You have to stop the things that are destroying you, that, that could destroy others. You say, stop right there. You are not going through. This is my mind. I own this and not you. You don't pay rent here. I, I, my parents, I, I sacrificed for this. And you cannot come in here because this is mine. I didn't let you in here. Only the good thoughts can go through. You take the bad thoughts. You arrest it. You say, no, you are not going through. And you let the good thoughts go through. Amen. Look for the positive. There's always something positive you can find about someone. Even if they're the worst person ever, still, don't treat them like crap. They're God's creation. God created that person. God didn't create that person and say, oh, man, I messed up. He didn't do that. He created that person just the way they are. He loved that person just the way they are. It doesn't matter if, if one leg is shorter than the other. It doesn't matter if... 
if something happened to them and it was just completely devastating, God created them just the way they are. You don't treat people like they're crap. Just like Pablo said, when they fix people, when they, in China, when they fix place, they fix it with gold. God, he is there. He is fixing people. You don't have to worry about it. Focus on your own life. When all else fails and judging, like pushing away judgment is the hardest thing to do. Focus on yourself and don't worry about what other people are doing, wearing, or etc. You have to, if you are, if you this log is, you're turning your head and you're hitting every single person you possibly can. People are starting to get mad at you. People are starting to get pissed off. Hey, deal with your own problems. Do it. Stop worrying about other people's stuff because you here have a log in your own eye and you're judging other people because they have one too, but smaller. They have a splinter in their eye. You have a log in yours. Deal with your own stuff and then, and then you can help other people. Exchange the time you judge people to something that can uplift your life. And instead of over here judging someone, exchange that time to doing something that could bring you up spiritually or physically, it doesn't matter, or even financially. Read the Bible, pray, um, learn something. If you're into instruments or if you're into sports and you're like, I already know everything that I could about that. Start going into technology. There's so much more things. There's never enough things to learn about in this world. There will always be new things coming up. Exchange that thing that you do that's wrong, that's negative, to something that's positive. Start, start uh, like learning stuff about real estate. Start learning stuff about money, saving money. And actually start saving money. Don't go out and spend it every single Wednesday on Applebee's after church. And I'm uh, also part of that, sadly. <laughs> so some practical steps. And if we can have some of the worst team go up really quick. Um, some practical advice for you to, for, to help you to stop doing this, to start working on yourself, to get rid of that log. Just, it's the simplest things. You can do your homework, clean your room, help your parents, obey your parents. For us teenagers, that's the hardest thing to do is obey our parents. Because we're like, they don't know anything about, about the new trend, about ripped jeans. <laughs> These ones are packed, so we're good. They don't know anything about the new trend, new clothes. They want me to wear these grandma shoes and I'm over, and like, and people over here wearing like uh, Yeezys and, and expensive shoes that are, the value of them are uh, growing like crazy. It doesn't make sense. And you obey your parents because they, they have the bigger picture. You're just looking at a small thing, but they see the whole picture. And that's why they do the things that they do is to save your life, to help you out. Amen. So, what are your thoughts? Do you have negative thoughts? Do you have thoughts that where you judge people, where you make fun of people, where you talk crap about other people just to lift yourself up? Or do you have thoughts where, you know what, I'm going to deal with this stuff on private. People don't need to see this. People don't need to see the problems that I have and I'm going to tweet it all over uh, Twitter or Instagram or anything like that. I'm going to learn. I'm going to do new things. What are, what are you? Where, are you there or are you there? Working on yourself is the hardest thing to do. That's why the majority of people don't do it. But the people that, don't, that do do it, they reap the best things that they could. They reap physically. They, reap, they have money. They know how to use that money. They have so much things. They have knowledge. So... Just realizing that you have a problem, you're already halfway at the finish line. The rest, even if well, it's hard, even though even if it's easy, just realizing you have a problem, you're already halfway to the finish line. What's in your head? What are the thoughts that are going through your head? What is in your head? So I want you guys to think when you go home, when you're before you go to sleep, just just pause and and turn around and be like. What am I doing with my life? Where am I, what are my goals? What do I want to be when I grow up? What is my future? What have I done in the past? How can I fix those problems? What's in your head?